Welcome one to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Versus Super Mario Bros. Brought to us by Nintendo. Versus Super Mario Bros. is the arcade version of the original Super Mario Bros. With more enemies, higher difficulty, and new levels. The levels that were added to this game were later reused for Super Mario Bros. 2, known in the US as the Lost Levels. I am playing on a special version of the game that allows you to play versus Super Mario Bros. on the original NES. When you start the game, you can do a few things, like selecting how many credits you have, lives, and such, before jumping into the first level. This specially made arcade version of Super Mario Bros. was not only more difficult, but also had fewer warp zones for you to go through. As we play through the game, I will be talking about all the differences between this version and the original Super Mario Bros. while showing every one of the levels. The game starts off like normal with World 1-1, and we'll take the shortcut through this stage just because I'm sure by now you've probably seen the original first level of Super Mario Bros. Going through the pipe near the beginning and then going out the opposite side will of course put us right near the flagpole. None of the goals or story or anything like that is really changed up for this particular version. The Versus Super Mario Bros. was seen not only as its own cabinet, but also seen in many of the Nintendo Play Choice 10 machines, which were basically an arcade version of NES games. Nintendo's Play Choice 10 machines featured a lot of different classic NES games, including some that never actually got releases for Nintendo home console in the US, including the game based on the movie The Goonies, though we did of course receive Goonies 2 later on down the line. Level 1-2 remains pretty much the same except for two blocks removed near the pipe at the end, which allowed you to go into the Minus World, if you're familiar with that infamous glitch from Mario 1. Those blocks are removed so that you're unable to do that glitch. If you're familiar with the original Mario Brothers, you'll probably notice throughout the run of this game that there are more enemies placed in different locations, as well as if you play it for yourself, you'll notice that there are less power-ups as well as less one-ups, so you can't get quite as many one-ups in the game. Now the first major change comes in 1-4. The original 1-4 is not here, but it's actually replaced with the level that would become 1-4 for the Lost Levels version of the game, aka Mario 2. So definitely a bit more challenging and harder, with more of the spinning fire platforms for you to have to worry about. When you made it to the end of this corridor, of course, there's going to be some fireballs firing at you from Bowser. And we can defeat Bowser just like always by jumping over him and hitting the axe at the end in order to drop him down into the lava and find our good friend Toad. Forever and ever, our princess is in another castle. Since most of the 1-ups are removed, the ones that do remain are in World 1-1. And then the ones for 3-1, 5-1, and 7-1 still remain, but require you to get certain number of coins in previous levels in order for these invisible 1-ups to end up making their appearance. The stage, however, of 2-1 does remain the same, though there is some more enemies, at least from my recollection. Use the spring at the end to boost our way over the wall and make it to the flagpole to complete the stage. Now, 2-2 remains the first of the underwater levels, but it's actually level 7-2, which was the last of the underwater stages in the original Super Mario Bros. Lots of bloopers, which of course are pretty unpredictable and a bit hard to dodge. One of the tougher enemies throughout the original Mario Bros., but not the toughest. Be very careful of the open areas, of course, that are going to try to suck you downward. It's not worth going for those coins, especially in open areas with coins near the bottom of the screen. Just ignore them and keep on moving through unless you really want to collect those extra bits of coins. There are the slow moving cheap cheeps as well, but it's always the bloopers that are ones that end up causing me to die or take any kind of damage during the course of these stages. 
Even here, the blooper ends up just barely touching me as I make it to the pipe and complete 2-2. Now 2-3 has been replaced with 7-3 from normal Super Mario Bros. It's a tough stage, big bridges, lots of cheap cheeps coming up from below. I've always found it most useful to keep on moving. The more you slow down, the harder it is to judge where the cheap cheeps are coming from, and the more chance for one of them to end up running into me. Now it may not be the best strategy for some, but I've always found that if I keep on moving, I have a better chance of being able to dodge those particular enemy types. Two four has actually been changed to six four from the original game. There's a lot more of the rotating fires here, but thankfully there is a mushroom near the very beginning, so you can grab that. Watch out for the rotating fires. You can actually time it so you can run underneath of them. The room will open up a bit, so you'll have to jump in between a series of them before Bowser starts spewing the fire. Thankfully, Bowser's bridge is a little bit more open than it was even in 1-4 of this version, so we can hit the axe and then properly move on to the next world. Now, one change in level 3-1 is there's no longer a Koopa Troopa at the end of the stage on the staircase. It's been replaced by a Goomba. This way, you cannot perform the infinite 1-up trick. Another one of those infamous tricks from the original Super Mario Bros. that allowed you to get infinite lives. This level also introduces the Hammer Bros, one of the more unpredictable and difficult enemies for you to bypass in any of the Super Mario Bros. games, but especially in this good old original game. After a staircase filled with Goombas, we jump over them and hit the flagpole. Unfortunately, Nintendo became wise, so they didn't want the arcade players to get that infinite life trick to work. Now, level 3-2 has also been changed. It's replaced with level 2-2 of the Lost Levels. There's some more obstacles, such as the open gaps and floating pipes at the end of the stage, and you have to use the hidden block in order to reach and get over that particular gap. A much tougher stage than definitely the original 3-2. Though the star does remain here, so be sure to grab that so you can run through a series of the Koopa Troopas as well as a few other enemies along your path here. If you need a mushroom, be sure to open up this block at the top here in order to grab it. And when you make it here, it's a little bit difficult, but if you hunt up just a bit, you should be able to find the hidden blocks and then get up to the very top and make the jump over the gap here. From that point on, the rest of the level isn't too difficult. There are some more Goombas coming down the staircase, so be sure to be on the lookout for them before hitting that flagpole at the end. Thankfully, 3-3 remains the same from the original Flying Koopa Troopas and a lot of moving platforms throughout the course of the level. Right here near the beginning, we can get the power up so we can have the Fire Flower for the first time during the course of this playthrough. The biggest problem sometimes is just being sure to have enough momentum to reach whatever platforms you need to, but a relatively simple level in comparison to the level we just dealt with. No him blocks or anything else needed in order to make it over any of the big gaps. Watch out for the jumping fireballs out of the pits near the beginning of 3-4 as well as the rotating fire. There is a lot of rotating fire during the very course of the beginning of this stage. After making it through a series of these ones, where there's one on the bottom and one above you, there's a pretty easy time period where you'll be able to bypass them. You'll have a few more gaps to jump while also avoiding the fireballs coming straight at you before making it to Bowser. Throw out some of the fire flower power that we have here in order to destroy him and reveal, of course, that he is actually a decoy before we're able to get to the axe and move on. Now, of course, if you don't have the Fire Flower going into that part, it's a bit more difficult because of those bricks that are hanging low during that segment. 
good old 4-1, one of the other more popular stages, just to the fact that this was the stage you would make it to after taking the longest warp at the beginning of the game in 1-2. Lakitu, of course, flying overhead, dropping down those spinies, and as long as you're running at a pretty good speed, those spinies will never be able to catch up with you. At the end, be very careful of the gap on the staircase here before Lakitu retreats and you're able to hit the flag. Now, 4-2 remains the same, but if you decide to go for the warp zone here at the end of the level, it has been modified. No longer can you go to world 7 or 8, you can only go to world 6 here. So that stops you from being able to instantly travel. There were a lot of changes done to the later levels of the game, so maybe that's another reason why they decided to remove those warp zones, but I'm sure also because the fact it was the arcade version, they didn't want people to get to the end too quickly, is the main reason here. Be careful here when jumping over as the platform is lowering, you'll have a very small window to jump over to avoid falling down below. There aren't really any changes done the 4-3, there's the big mushroom platforms and a lot of momentum jumping that's needed in order to make sure that you have enough height and length on your jumps to be able to reach across these gaps. There's a couple of these moving up and down elevator-like platforms, sometimes you'll have to stand on one to raise the other, but if you stand, of course, on one for too long, it will end up breaking off and you'll fall down into the pit below. Now, 4-4 is actually replaced with 5-4 from the original Super Mario Brothers here. There's a lot of the rotating fireballs. If you move quickly and time it right, you can just run all the way right past them. During the second part here, there's a really quick moving rotating one, as well as the fireballs are coming your way, but it's a relatively easy stage considering how far into the game we are and all the changes that have already been made to this version. Five dash one remains unchanged, and I always like this level due to the change to the plant life throughout the course of the stage. You'll have the trees and all that have been replaced with like the white versions of them. When I was younger, I always thought it was kind of like snow on the trees. I'm not sure exactly if that's what they were going for, but either way, I still like that aesthetic change to the level overall. Be careful, though, of the bullet bill near the end of it. They will fire out sometimes a pretty good amount of bullets towards your way when you're trying to make it to that staircase at the end before moving on to 5-2. 5-2 is another level that remains unchanged. Bullet bills are another part of the stage. Use the spring near the right side or just jump over it if you time your jump correctly. If you have the Fire Flower, it will help you out against some of the Hammer Brother enemies throughout here. It's always best, of course, if you have the advantage of being above them on a platform or way below them, just to run past them. But, if you're gonna meet them head-on and you have the Fire Flower, of course, use that to knock them out. But, if you don't have that to your advantage, wait for the right timing. Or usually, best bet is just try to be very quick. Don't even think about it, just run and do whatever your first instinct is to try to avoid those Hammer Brothers. Doesn't always work, but sometimes that may be your best bet instead of hesitating for too long and you end up jumping right into one of the hammers. Now 5-3 is replaced with actually level 6-3 from the original game, and then 6-3 is replaced by 4-3 from the Lost Levels. I know, that's a bit confusing, but either way, this is basically level 6-3 instead of 5-3 if you were playing the original Super Mario Bros. There's a bunch of bullet bills here, as well as you're gonna need to use your momentum to help you make it over a few of the jumps. Not a particularly long stage, but because of some of the trickier platforming in it, you'll have to definitely take your time on a few of the jumps. Now in 5-4 is a maze-like dungeon, but it's been changed up a little bit for this particular version. Start along the very top portion, 
And then when you make it to the next section, what you're going to have to do is drop all the way down to the bottom floor, run across the floor here, watching out for the rotating flames, of course. When you make it to the end, you'll be able to then jump over a couple of really small gaps and make it to Bowser. Jump on the axe at the end, and you'll be able to move on. World 6 remains the same for the beginning portion of it, but a few of the later parts of it, 6.3 and 6.4, have been changed up. 6.1 has a Lakitu up above that will be throwing the spinies up. Thankfully, there's some platforms to get pretty high up, so you can actually take out the Lakitu by jumping on them, or using your fireballs in order to take them out if you want to, before continuing on the stage. There's a couple of Paracoopas moving up and down, be careful of those near the very end of the stage, and then, of course, hit that flagpole and move on to 6.2. In 6-2, watch out for the piranha plants near the very beginning, use your fire flower if you have one in order to hit them, or just wait for course for them to retreat. There are the beetles here that will be moving with their hard shell blocking your fireballs, so always be, of course, concerned with them. There is a lot of pipes and a lot of piranha plants during this stage, but all of them can be easily bypassed with just a little bit of extra timing. At the end, there's a couple of Goombas coming down the stairs, as well as one more Piranha Plant pipe to watch out for. Now, 6-3 has been changed up. It's actually replaced with 4-3 from the Lost Levels. But because 4-3 is not a night world in the Lost Levels, it was changed up a bit and given the kind of snow-like platforming and all, which I think actually looks really, really cool in these classic Super Mario levels. This is the hardest jump, though, probably maybe in the whole game, where you have to make a large jump, hit the Paracoopa, and bounce over to the platform on the right side. There's also a whole bunch of bullet bills and a few other long jumps that are pretty difficult. This is not a stage that is really easy, so I'm sure a lot of people that made it to this stage for the first time playing the arcade version would have had problems when it comes to this one. Now, since 6-4 was moved to 2-4, we're actually getting to play 5-4 from the Lost Levels here in 6-4. Jumping up fireballs and really quickly rotating fires are the biggest threat. Unfortunately, a mistimed jump lands me into one of the lava fireballs, and I'll have to be very cautious now as making the way through the rest of the stage. Ready for the right opportunities of the jumping up and down fireballs, and when you make it here, drop down the little opening if you want to, or you can just run across the top portion, but I usually find it easier to just go through the bottom portion, especially if you're already small Mario. Couple of big jumps throughout the course of it and more rotating fire before making it to Bowser. This is a tough fight. I just wait for Bowser to do a nicely timed jump up into the air, and at that right moment, run underneath of him in order to hit the axe and move on to 7-1. While most of World 7 has been changed up, 7-1 remains the same, filled with lots of the bullet bills, spewing cannons, that are going to try to take you out. Be of course very careful when maneuvering as much as you possibly can around these guys. There's also a few piranha plants and some Koopa Troopas, and near the end you will run into Hammer Brothers, so always be cautious of them, hope that you have a fire flower, or at least you're a little bit powered up, unlike I am going into this, because sometimes it's best to just take a hit and keep on moving past those guys. Now, since 7-2 and 7-3 already happened from the original Mario Brothers, we actually get 6-2 and 6-3 from the Lost Levels version. 7-2 here remains the underwater level, as it's now 6-2 from Super Mario Bros. 2 The Lost Levels. Lots of open areas here, so be very careful. Don't fall too far down and mash the swim button when needed in order to try to keep yourself afloat from falling into the abyss down below. Bloopers, always troublesome. I try to go underneath of them whenever possible to try to avoid accidentally having them run into me. 
a lot of seaweed located here to try to swim in between. Thankfully, though, it's pretty easy to collect a good amount of coins here during the course of this. Another thing you probably notice, though, is coins rack up into your total score that you end up collecting throughout the course of the game. As you can see, I currently have 143 coins that I've collected so far. Seven three is another one of the bridge-style levels, with large bridges for you to run, and a lot of cheap sheeps to avoid their coming up from below. There's also some pretty tricky jumps here, just ignore this block altogether. Not worth trying to bounce off a paracoupa in order to hit it here. Once again, keeping moving is a good strategy, but there are some times where you may need to slow down because of just how small some of these platforms end up being, and if you're just off by a hair, you may end up falling down into this pit, or try to backtrack just a bit and end up running into a cheap cheap. Seven Dash Four is another maze castle, but it is changed up as far as the solution of figuring it out, unlike the previous one that we ended up going through. Here you'll have to jump up to the very top platform, drop down to this middle one, and then jump up to the top and run across. Now this is where things are tricky though, because you get one shot at this. Go across the bottom here on that very small platform and then move over here and take the top path, before then dropping down and then taking the bottom path in order to make it through this stage. The reason why you only get one shot at it is because of the way that the level ends up looping around. If you loop back around one time, the ability to move to that small area with that one single block over the lava becomes inaccessible. So make sure that you get the maze right the first time through. Now World 8 surprisingly really isn't all changed up all that much. There is a minor change to 8-4 later on, but for the most part, these levels remain unchanged as far as their design goes. 1-ups and the like are changed around, so if there was any 1-ups hidden here, they are gone. But because this level is so difficult on its own, they decided not to really change these ones up. Be sure to grab the star, of course, like always during this stage, as it's really easy to then run through a large series of Goombas and Koopa Troopas, Beetles and Piranha Plants, and be ready to make those very tricky jumps. Especially the one here with the one singular platform, like always, one of the jumps I always had trouble with as a kid, and I practiced it to the point that I could probably end up doing it blindfolded. Eight two also remains the same. Lakeet two above you, a couple of Koopa Troopas wait for them to jump over you. And when you make it over here and hit the spring, you'll notice that you end up getting a mushroom instead of a one up here. It was always nice to have that one up because this is a relatively tricky stage, and if you were able to at least get that one up, you could keep repeating the level without having to worry about game overing during this stage. But honestly, having that mushroom here during this version of the game actually ends up helping me out a bit. Lots of bullet bills, this tricky jump here which I always find landing on this platform and then moving over. Sometimes you can just run off that pipe and run across those little gaps and jump, but I've always had trouble with it, so I've always gotten that one spot, moved to the very edge of the platform, and then quickly run and made that jump. The end has a lot of bullet bills, a big gap there at the stairs, but then we can move into the castle and move on to 8-3. Now 8-3 has always been an infamously tough stage because it's pretty flat for the most part with lots of Hammer Brothers to deal with, including Hammer Brothers on the flat ground. The best bet though to run over them guys is to just jump. As soon as you see them on screen, get ready to time it and jump over their heads before they're able to really get going with the hammers. It doesn't always work 100% of the time, there's always that chance of a stray hammer getting out before you're able to jump and just barely clipping you. But I've always found the best strategy though, like I did in some of the other levels, is just keep on running. Now for 8-4, the invisible block to use to reach the floating pipe is moved a bit higher, requiring a bit of a tougher jump, so it's a little bit harder to reach. But the strategy and what pipes that you have to use in order to make it through the maze of 8-4 does remain the same here. 
here's the pipe I was talking about. That hidden block is a little bit higher, so it requires a harder jump in order to get up. Take out the Paracoopas before you end up attempting it, and then run up and make the jump up so that you can make it into that pipe above. For that next part, of course, Cheap Cheeps come up from below. You don't have to go too far there, thankfully, for the pipe that ends up leading to the small underwater segment of 8-4. This remains unchanged. Bloopers are here, some rotating fires. I like the duck here on the very edge here to watch out for that rotating fire before continuing along my path here. At the end, be very careful of the blooper and then go through that pipe in order to make it to the final part of the stage. As long as you're powered up, you should be able to avoid the Hammer Brothers, but it's very difficult sometimes. There's a lot, and I mean a lot of bricks at the final boss. It may be safe if you have a power-up going into the Bowser fight just to run, run through him and take the damage, and then hit the axe at the end. Either way, if you're able to complete the stage, you'll get your ending for Versus Super Mario Bros. Now, at the end, instead of looping back around to World 1-1, but being a little bit tougher like it does in the original Mario Brothers, you end up getting the game over, and then you get to put in your initials for the high score screen, since of course this was an arcade game back in the day. While not a completely different game from the original Mario Brothers, the tougher difficulty and a few other changes makes it an interesting piece of Super Mario Brothers history. But with that, guys, that will wrap up this edition of Play It Through. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up or commenting down below. Now, if you enjoyed this Play It Through for this obscure Mario title, be sure to check out the one I did last week for Excite Bike Bum Bum Mario Stadium. It's a obscure Mario game featuring the Excite Bike gameplay, but with Mario characters. It was only released in Japan for the Super Famicom, and this is Teleview, so pretty obscure. I also need to thank all the members of my Patreon, you guys are keeping this channel alive. If you're unfamiliar with Patreon, it's basically a monthly pledge that gives me support each and every month that allows me to keep doing what I'm doing, and you can help out as well, just click the little Patreon button down below, and there's some cool incentives for doing so. Anyway, thank you all so much for all the support and watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.